Hi, my name is Douglas Starnes, and I want to thank you for watching this screencast series about Microsoft Web Matrix. Web Matrix is a lightweight, easy to learn and use development tool to help you create web applications quickly. But don't let the word lightweight fool you. Web Matrix is not a toy. Sure, it isn't as powerful as Visual Studio, but with the power of Visual Studio, or even Visual Studio Express, comes complexity. Sometimes you don't need or want to deal with that complexity, and Web Matrix fits into that gap. But that's not to say that it isn't a great tool for beginners. It is. My goal with this video series is to demonstrate that Web Matrix is a tool worthy of use for real web applications. One interesting thing about Web Matrix is that it supports several different platforms out of the box. For example, in addition to C Sharp, it also supports the open source PHP and Node.js platforms and it connects to Windows Azure so you can quickly and easily publish your code to the cloud. Web Matrix also supports NuGet, the .NET package manager. There is an integrated database editor, which we'll see soon, and a lot more. So let's get started. The application we are going to build in this video series is a conference scheduling application that I call SuperConf. Yes, I know the name does not imply much creative effort on my part, but there's a reason I am in IT and not marketing. So we will need a way to manage a list of sessions, the speakers associated with those sessions, and show them in a chronological list. We'll be using ASP.NET web pages in C Sharp. If you've been around the ASP.NET platform, you likely have heard of ASP.NET web forms and or ASP.NET MVC. ASP.NET web pages is a lightweight yet still powerful addition to the ASP.NET family, which is supported by WebMatrix and has a lot in common with ASP.NET technologies already in use. I want to point out that just as ASP.NET MVC was not a replacement for ASP.NET Web Forms, ASP.NET Web Pages is not a replacement for the existing ASP.NET stack. Each of the three has its place, and in this series we will use ASP.NET Web Pages. I've opened up Web Matrix and I'm at the start screen for Web Matrix version 3. I'm not going to demonstrate how to install Web Matrix because it's so simple. You just download the Microsoft Web Platform Installer, the link for the download is at the bottom of the screen search for Web Matrix, and start the install. The Web Platform Installer will determine what dependencies you need, download them if necessary, and then install everything on your machine. If you're starting from a machine that has no development tools on it, this could take a while. The Start page has three options. Examine existing sites, create a new site, or open an existing site. I'm going to choose the middle option, create a new site, and I will be presented with three more choices. Empty site will do what the name suggests. Create a web application project with no content. The app gallery contains pre-built web applications such as WordPress, Moodle, and Orchard that you can install. There are many more popular web applications in the app gallery. What we're going to do is create a site from a new template. Clicking on the template gallery will show this window. As mentioned, this will be an ASP.NET web pages site so click on ASP.NET in the left, if it isn't already selected, and then you'll see a few different templates that you can select to create some boilerplate code. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is create an empty site. This is a little different from the empty site option before. This time it will set up the site to use ASP.NET web pages, but not put any content in it like the other templates do. I'll give it the name SuperConf, and click Next. Web Matrix then asks me if I want to create a Windows Azure website for this application. I'm not going to do this right now, but we'll deploy it to Azure later on. So I'll click Skip. Web Matrix will think about it for a little while, download some needed assemblies, and then will show me the application in the editor. Since there is no content in the site, I'll click on the Create a New File link in the middle of the window. ASP.NET web pages are CSHTML files, so I'll click the CSHTML option and give the page a name of firstpage.cshtml and click OK. I'll make the text a little bigger and you can see how ASP.NET web pages are more lightweight. First, the code and presentation are in the same file. This is not to imply that it is no longer important to separate logic and presentation. For smaller applications you can put them in the same file but organize them so that they are conceptually separate. I'm going to add some text to the HTML so that we can see the page working. To 
see the page in a browser, right click on the name of the page and select Launch in Browser. This will start a lightweight version of IIS called IIS Express to serve the site and then we'll open up the default browser and navigate to the page. And we can see that it worked. We can also put C Sharp code in an ASP.NET web page using Razor. Razor is a templating language that lets us mix HTML and C Sharp code. The block at the top of the page is a Razor code block. This is shown by the at sign. Then the curly braces hold the C Sharp code. I'm going to create a new list of integers. I can now access this list within my HTML by preceding the name of the list with an at sign and even perform actions on it such as indexing. If we save this file, we can go back to the browser and just refresh the page. No need to restart IIS Express and see the results. I could print all of the numbers in the list using a for each loop. And if we save the file and go to the browser again and refresh we'll see that it worked. So you can see that Razor syntax knows, based on use of the at sign, what is HTML and what is C Sharp. But sometimes it needs a little help. Let's say that we wanted to display odd numbers by adding one to each even. We could try this. But it's not going to give us the result we want. Razor doesn't realize that even plus one is supposed to be the entire expression. We need to use parentheses to group the entire expression and then prefix that with the at sign. There are other special cases that we'll see later on. That should be enough for the first video. Next we'll look at how easy it is to get a database up and going. Thanks for watching.